There was a time in this country when broadcasting meant the CBC. Now it's a vast, multi-billion dollar industry constantly undergoing change. In the past two decades, we've seen incredible growth in cable channels, pay TV, satellite dishes, video cassette recorders, and even super stations. How then does Canada maintain its own voice? Today, a broadcast task force headed by Gerald Kaplan, a former NDP official, and Florian Sauvageau, a professor at Laval University, made public their recommendations. The commission spent nine months trying to determine what Canadians want from their broadcasting system, whether it be the private sector or the CBC. But as the journal's Bruce Yacato reports, there has been a problem that has plagued the industry from day one, a problem that still exists today. <laughs> You're just <laughs> of all the programs we saw on our TV screens in 1985, only one quarter were Canadian made. Almost all the rest came from American producers. American programming has dominated our airwaves since the 1920s. 1932 saw the first attempt to regain control of Canadian airwaves with the introduction of the Broadcast Act. In the House of Commons, Prime Minister R.B. Bennett said, this country must be assured complete control of broadcasting from Canadian sources, free from foreign interference or influence. The early 50s marked the arrival of television, and politicians were still trying to preserve a strong Canadian identity, this time against the onslaught of American TV programs. Liberal Minister Lionel Chevrier explained the challenge. The essential reason, he said, for public development of television in this country is that we want both popular programs and cultural programs to be produced in Canada by Canadians about Canada. Canadian regulators have always insisted that strong Canadian content be a condition of getting a broadcast license. But Canadian broadcasters have argued that American programs were essential to staying competitive, even in the early days. For the time being, we are going to have to carry a fairly... A uh, heavy schedule of American programs in order to keep, compete with American programs from their source. But uh, if we develop Canadian talent, and we are developing Canadian talent, Canadian programs, in time, we will be able to compete on their own ground. Stand away from it. But the simple, overwhelming economic fact of life remains unchanged. It is much cheaper to buy American programs than to produce homegrown equivalents. Consider this. One episode of a hit series the size of, say, Remington Steel costs about a million dollars or so to produce somewhere in California. But a Canadian network can buy that episode for less than $50,000. And that's peanuts compared to the $900,000 it costs to produce just one episode of the CBC series, Seeing Things. Studies upon studies have suggested the traditional solution to this dilemma. Either provide more funding for the public sector, stimulate the private, or both. But only the problem has survived. There's still not enough Canadian programs to fill the airwaves. The vast majority of our programming still comes from south of the border. In announcing yet another broadcast task force last year, former communications minister Marcel Mass surprised no one in the industry. Changing technologies and economics, increased demand for services, increased competition, these face every broadcaster daily in the exercise of their profession. What the Minister of Communications set up came to be known as the kaplan Sauvageau Task Force. Its members set out to discover just what Canadians wanted from their broadcasters. Among their findings, the agency regulating broadcasting, the CRTC, has failed to carry out its mandate under the Broadcast Act. Private broadcasters are quite profitable, but do not spend enough money on Canadian programming. The CBC does not get enough money to do a proper job. Canadian programs account for only 28% on English language television. And 98% of all drama shown on Canadian television comes from foreign producers. There is a timeless quality about many of these choices and policy decisions. It seems that for some time now, Canadian governments have been calling royal commissions on these matters at the rate of one or two a decade. And not all of them have made much of an impact. The last report on broadcasting issued by the Applebaum Bear Commission has been roundly ignored since it was released in 1982. For The Journal, I'm Bruce Yacato. In just a moment, we'll have industry reaction to the broadcasting report, but first we are joined from Ottawa by co-author Gerald Kaplan. The task force says, Gerald Kaplan, that there is a crisis in Canadian culture. How do you define that crisis? 
the crisis, Barbara, is the dramatic absence of a significant amount of Canadian shows that you and I can watch in prime time in, uh, on Canadian stations. And you're talking about the CBC here, not just a lack from the private stations. Yeah, we think it's, uh, it's ludicrous in the extreme that the public broadcaster should be using public funds to show films in the middle of the evening, to show programs that you and I can get on four or five other channels in Vancouver, in Montreal, in Toronto. Do you know that we can watch more American programs in many Canadian cities than we could if we were in Manhattan. That doesn't seem to be sensible for the CBC. Now, I'm sure that all the broadcasters that came before you told you why the situation prevails as it is and told you the cost of doing otherwise. Why do you believe we can fix it? Oh, we're telling them the cost of doing otherwise. The cost is too great to the Canadian psyche, number one. Number two, they make a lot of money. It's a very profitable enterprise. Number three, they get an astonishing amount of state support. They get regulatory protection. They get legislative protection. They get protection against excessive competition. They live in a world that in some ways is cosseted by the state, ironically enough. And we're arguing that they should continue to keep that protection, but that they've got to make a substantially bigger contribution back to the public in return. What, where is the evidence that Canadians will watch an extremely added amount of Canadian content. You're, you're asking okay. the consumer to pay okay. for a whole lot more Canadian content. Do they want it? We argue that in principle it is improper for a broadcasting system of any given nation to have dramatically more of another nation's output than of our own. And what we're arguing is that somewhere in the three billion dollar world that constitutes Canadian broadcasting, monies can be reallocated in such a way that no single component, including the government, is asked to shell out tens of millions of dollars. If the private broadcasters do more here, and if the government does more of its advertising on Canadian programming, and if there's a tax write-off so other advertisers advertise more on Canadian programs, and if the government thought they wanted to do it all to put a small tax on the sales and rental of, VSR, of VCRs, you can raise very many dollars pretty easily. So it's not such a big ticket. Okay, let me bring our other guests into the discussion at that point. Al Johnson was president of the CBC from 1975 to 1982, and Izzy Asper is now chairman of the Global Television Network. Get each of your reactions very quickly. You first, Mr. Johnson. Um, I don't know if you've had a chance to analyze these numbers and uh, whether or not it's even sufficient to the task. What do you think? Well, I think the real question is whether, whether in the Kaplan Sauvageau report we have set the end target of Canadian television. I agree entirely that Canadian television faces a cultural crisis. Uh, we all know 75 percent American and we know what that does to us. It means that our kids are being raised American. It means when uh, we're watching television in Saskatchewan or television in Newfoundland or wherever that we aren't getting a sense of bond with the rest of the country. Now you can't do that with Miami Vice and you can't do it with Dallas. And what I'm arguing is that there ought to be established a single measure as to what we want to achieve in television in Canada, and, and, and that measure ought to be, and it does not come clear to me, that measure ought to be equal time for Canada on the television screen. That we as viewers ought to have a 50-50 chance to be able to get Canadian programming of all kinds. Mr. Johnson, before I turn to Izzy Asper for his quick reaction, is this got the ingredients that you think will Canadianize Canadian television? Yes, this has got the ingredients. I quite agree that uh, the private broadcasters should be producing more Canadian programming. I quite agree that the CBC should replace the American programming. I quite agree there should be two new television pro services that are entirely Canadian. I think all of this, however, has got to be placed within the context of a single target so we all know what we want to achieve. Okay, Izzy Asper, your reaction, because the private broadcasters like yourself are one of the targets of this report. You're apparently making a oodles of money and not paying your way, not giving the Canadian taxpayer what they deserve back. I would disagree with uh, Jerry Kaplan when he suggests that the state gives extraordinary or enormous support to the broadcast industry in Canada. In fact, I would argue just the opposite. Uh, the suggestion that the industry is unduly profitable, uh, I think, has to be looked at uh, in 
in, in both geographical and what sectors are we talking about. For example, the independent broadcasters in Canada are dramatically less profitable than the, uh, the CBC and the CTV affiliates. So when we look for where this contribution should come, we've got to look at whose profits are we talking about. Now, let me give you my, my, my bottom line. I like the report. I think it's going to be universally endorsed in this country because it seeks a, an appropriate objective, the greater Canadianization of our own country, the retention of our own identity and cultural and unification devices. That's not going to be the quarrel. The debate will, will range over how to achieve it. Has the task force made recommendations which are in aid of that or are they counterproductive to it? Could, could I ask you on one in particular? They want you to boost your Canadian content in peak time between 7 and 11 to 45 percent. They, TV Guide suggests it's now 22 percent. You've got to more than double what you're doing now in peak time. Do you like that? Will you do it? We'll do it if we have the profits uh, to do it. And that, that brings me to my basic uh, concern about the report. If you establish two new uh, television channels in this country, Presumably, you are going to take audience to watch that from someplace. If you take audience from us, then it's going to affect our bottom line. If you then say to us at the same time, we want you to increase your investment in your Canadian programming, you get into a, a very, very dicey situation. Can I, Barbara, talk for a second about Izzy's complaint that there's not enough state protection? The state gives so much protection and support to the private broadcasters that we were astonished, all seven of us, including the five of us who come out of the private sector or the task force, uh, we could barely believe it. Uh, the, the C-58 legislation, which acts as an incentive to advertisers, to advertising Canadian channels, and the simultaneous substitution uh, regulation of the CRTC are worth 90 to 95 million dollars a year to, to no, Canadian no. broadcasters. We did the figures. It's not a bias I, I, on our part. Besides Barbara, that, I, let, let me just finish Izzy for a second. Okay. Besides that, there is no such thing, Barbara, as competitive license renewals in, in, in Canada. When Izzy Station go up for license hearings, you and I cannot form a new company and say to the CRTC, we could do it better than these guys. In effect, the CRTC has institutionalized private property in the broadcasting system, which the Broadcast Act says is not acceptable. And these guys have a license forever. Now, there's just an endless array of these kind of protective provisions for which the private broadcaster must repay society. Right, I'm and, very... the, and the private broadcaster does. The private broadcaster broadcasts 60% Canadian content. The private broadcaster makes a contribution, and I'm talking again about the independents, through its many, many faceted public service contributions, its local unprofitable broadcasting, no native peoples. And in fact, I must say, Barbara, the uh, commission or the task force report does recognize this and, and pays some tribute to the independent broadcasters of Canada. And it's just saying, you've got to do better. And I say yes. So right, Al Johnson, let me try and raise something that's troubling me. I don't know if it's going to trouble anybody else when they read this report. And that is that whoever the money comes from it's an incredible sum of new money and reallocated money in the system. Will the consumer, in fact, applaud this report, or will they say, hey, just a minute, how much is that going to cost? I think the consumers are, want to, want, are going to want to know, first of all, what it is we're seeking to achieve and whether this will achieve it. Uh, if, we, uh, if we achieve a thoroughly Canadian television service, I think, that they will, uh, I think that they will agree with it. I think they will go along with it. How much of your report, Jerry Kaplan, do you think will be implemented? Oh, uh, we're, we're not uh, pessimistic at all. I think we offer the government a lot, and uh, if it wants to go down in history, as I think from time to time Mr. Mulroney would like to do, then I think we give them one of the tools to do it. I, I think there's a real chance. You know I'm not politically naive, but sillier things have happened than a government like this embracing our kind of recommendations. Okay, we thank you all. Thank you very much, Barbara. Thank you. Thank you.